All right, Shalom, Shalom. First off, give our praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakarkadash, the bonders to the apostles and the elders of the GMS. Salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity, all the men and the women who follow. This is the brother Karataza from the Nebraska Watchman Camp. And uh, just um, came across this uh, stoic quote, I guess you'll call it. And it's something I actually, I've been working on myself. Um, so when I say the things that I'm saying in this lesson, it starts with me first, you know, um, and Lord's will, this is edifying to the body. All right. So, um, it says, accept humbly, let go easily. All right. Um, and what, from what I get from this scripture or not from the scripture, but this quote, um, accept humbly. All right. When things come your way, you know, gratitude gratitude, accomplishments, you know, don't be, uh, don't boast or brag about it, you know, necessarily, you know, we all have our fun and games, but overall, just, you know, humbly accept, you know, uh, your accolade, I'll say, it says, and let go easily, and when that's taken from you, let it go just as easy as you accepted it, because, you know, we have our peaks and valleys. We have our ups and downs in this truth, in this life, in this world, all right, especially here in Babylon. So just as easily as the Most High has given us a blessing, it can be taken from us, all right? Also, appreciation. Appreciate when you are um, up and, hey, and also give thanks when you're down. So I got a, um, a Google definition. We'll look into that. It says, um, for, you know, the meaning of accept humbly, let go easily. It says, this lesson is pretty straightforward, but profound. When something comes your way, be it status, praise, or material things, accept it with humility and be mindful that just because you received that thing, it does not mean that you're more important than anyone else, right? Just because, you know, you got an MVP trophy don't mean that you're more valuable or, or uh, that, that, that uh, you're more important, should I say, more important than the 12th man on the bench, all right? Because especially in this truth, all right, because we're a body, all right? Um, the eyes aren't more important than the ears, Okay, the hands aren't more important than the feet, so on and so forth. All right, we're we're all members working together to uh, make one body. All right, it says, uh, do not attach yourself to what you've gained, right? Because it can be easily taken away, as I stated. So uh, let's get a couple of precepts. Of course, we're going to start with uh, Psalm 34 and 18. It says, the Most High Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such be of a contrite spirit. You know, the most high, he, that's, that word nigh is close. All right, he draws closer to people who are of a broken heart and save as such as be in a contrite spirit, a humble spirit. Okay, why? Because uh, uh, when you're broken or you're humble and you, um, Humbly come, come to the Most High, He respects that. You know, when you admit that you need help, when you admit that you can't do it all your own, on your own, that's when the Most High is going to make up that difference for you. But if you come in and you need something, all right, and, you know, for example, uh, you you can't make your your you're, you're falling short of your rent, for example, and uh, you pray to the Most High. You call yourself praying to the Most High, and you say, "Lord, you know I'm that dude. 
you know, I, I, I can't be missing my rent now, Lord. So, uh, you know, Baba Rashad, help, help, help a brother out, you know. I, I, I can't, I can't be out here, you know what I'm saying, missing my rent. You know, the Lord look at you stupid. You that dude, go do it. You go make it happen. But that, that man that comes in, you know, Yah Bashim you know, Baba Bashai, Baba Bashai, you know, if it's, if, if it's in your will, you know, to allow me, you know, so on and so forth. But you see the two different connotations, two different spirits, right? Come in a humble spirit, you know, and asking the most high for any, not even asking the most high. You don't even have to be asking for anything, but just being humble. Maybe, maybe, um, um, let's see if I can get another example. Um, let's say, uh, you, you, you won, nah, hold on, give me a second here. All right, here we go. So, um, jump to, uh, the David Guzik, okay, for Psalm 18, for Psalm 34 and 18, it says, um, of course, you know, the righteous cry out, the, verse 17, the righteous cry out, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. It says the righteous cry out and the Lord hears. David reminds his men at the cave of Adullam that the most high attention, it's like the most high's attentive care is upon the righteous. David's testimony was that the most high had delivered him out of his all, out of all of his troubles. Now, this is at the cave of Adullam. Let's uh, just jump to that that uh, scripture right here. And we'll, before I do that, let's just read, uh, keep reading. B, it says, uh, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. This teaching from David was a wonderful, it's like it was wonderful for the men at the cave of Adullam to hear. They being in debt, distress, and discontent were likely those of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. They were the objects of the Most High favor and salvation, not his scorn. All right, so let's uh, jump into the song, uh, 1 Samuel 22 and 1. Now, in the previous chapter, and just to give context to the story, David is on the run from Saul. And, uh, you know, he went to the king, and he had to play crazy to get out of the situation. So this is directly after that situation. This is uh, 1 Samuel 22 and 1. It says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brother and his all of his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was distressed, it's like and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. And uh, there were with him about 400 men, right? So, I mean, that's when he, you know, was able to um, really, you know, boss up, but he didn't boss up because he, so to speak, okay, not because he, you know, uh, anointed himself or boasted, hey, I'm, I'm David, I'm that dude, I'm the one that killed the lion, I killed Gonz uh, Goliath, I did this. No, he he's in a, a broken heart right now. All right, he humbly gathered the troops. I guess you would say, and then um, to to keep on to the the point in th verse three, he says, "And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my mother, sorry, let my father and my mother." I pray thee come forth and be with you till I know what the Most High will do for me. So he was humble when he came to the king of Moab. He didn't go over, hey man, you know, I'm I'm David. I'm that nigga that killed Goliath, you know. But these haters out here, you know, they, they want my life. So, you know, let my mama, my daddy stay, you know what I'm saying, with you until I get this cleared out. No, he came humbly. 
You know, it says that, uh, he said, I pray thee that, you know, my mother and my father come with you until what? Until he know what the most high do for him. Because it's about what the most high's will is. It's not about us being that dude. Like I said, we all play around, have jokes. You know, you're on the court and, you know, you make a good shot. Hey. But leave play for play. And in real time and situations, you know, be a real man of the Lord. And David is giving a real good example on how to be a man of the Lord. Uh, this is Proverbs 11 and 2. I'll start with 1. It says, The Lord detests the use of dishonest scales, but he delight in accurate weights. Uh, nope, I didn't want one. This is 1 and 2. I need one in the next one. Slot here. Proverbs 11 and 2 says, Pride leads to disgrace. But humility comes, but with humility comes wisdom, right? So that's easy, you know, that's simple, straightforward. Pride leads to disgrace. You know, you having that prideful demon on you, it's going to be your end. But if you're humble, you know, you're going to know when to abound and when to abase. Because that's part of it, okay? Knowing when to, to boast yourself up. All right, and to, to drop your nuts, for lack of a better term, and to know when to come crouching. All right, and that's going to bring wisdom in the long term. All right, you're going to know how to, how to play the field and how to read the room and react in certain situations. All right, Proverbs 21, 27 and 1, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not, what the day it may bring forth. We don't know what t tomorrow is going to bring. And so like in that last verse, <clears throat> Proverbs 11 and 2, this was in the NLT. <clears throat> but uh, we don't know what, you know, the next hour will bring. Tomorrow, next year, none of that. So why why boast yourself? At the end of the day, it says vanity. It's empty. It means nothing. It says let another man praise thee and not thy own mouth a stranger and not their own lips. Because you might be that dude. But nobody wants to hear you say that you're that dude. But if, you know, your teammates, hey, man, you're that dude, hey, we wouldn't have won that game had you not got that interception at the end. Hey, if you didn't break that 40-yarder, we wouldn't have won. But nobody wants to hear, yeah, you know, I, I broke that 50-yard that 50 that yard run. You know, I ain't need none of y'all. But here, when you were wanting to play, you had a block, you had a block, you had a block, and it was a team effort. But yeah, you get the, the credit for it, but it's a team effort. All right? And like I said, a lot of this is to myself, because I have been out of order um, in, in over-praising or, you know, not, not being as humble, I'll say. And I can admit that, you know. And this is something that I've been working on. But I have to, I have to keep under my body and know and recognize who I am and what situations I get out of line or get out of order, okay? And I need to, you know, quell those situations and, and humble myself, okay? Humble my my ego because that's really what it is at the end of the day is ego. Let's let's get that word real quick. Let's see the Latin word ego meaning I. Uh, ego it says the metaphysics, the self that which that which feels, acts, or thinks. I. You know, going back to you, you yourself, I. Egoities. Um Yeah, so I mean it's we, it's about I. So it's all about yourself, basically. It goes the 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 self that feels that sure thinks about yourself. You know, this is going back on. Um, I it's crazy. I put a trip there. Ego trip. It was an ego trip. Apparently, I can't spell. Dang 
ego trip is an activity done in order to increase one's sense of self-importance. You know, what does it mean to ego trip? Something that you do because it makes you feel important and also shows other people how important you are. Hey, you know, we, we've been talking about this, you know, within the camp. Just, you know, uh, uh, gaslighting. And um, there's another term. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I can't remember what the other term is right now, but, you know, mainly gaslighting and uh, over, you know, an overestimation of one's self-importance. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's move on. Um, Hebrews, thir uh, Hebrews 10 and 34 says, and this is in the NLT, you suffered along those who were, oh, let me uh, back it up, 30, 10 and 33. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you help others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along those who were thrown into jail, and when you all, it's like, and when, you, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you uh, that will last forever. All right, so it says when all you had was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You know, let it go easily. It's as easy as you got something, man. It's easily as you got that house, that nice car. All right, a tornado can hit. It's as easy as you got that new job, layoffs. Just as easily as you got that woman, another nigga, with more money. We ain't promised anything in this world. Okay? Except death. Lord's will, there's going to be an elect amount of men. And Lord's will, I'm in that number, and Lord's will, you're in that number who won't taste the, the, the stink of death. Alright? But... While we on this side, all we can do is what the Lord requires. So, matter of fact, let me get this and we're going to end it on that. This is a uh, Sirach 2 and um, verse 2, it says, uh, I'll read verse 1. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, which we come to serve the Lord, we uh, estimate ourselves to be men of the Lord. It says, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right, you're going to go through some things, all right? It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. So when those times of trouble come, you know, uh, Sakya, when those times of trouble come, you have to be clear-minded, okay? And that comes with wisdom. Going back to what we were saying uh, back in Proverbs, that humility comes with wisdom, you're going to know how to react in those times. It says, cleave unto him, the most high, and depart not away from the law, all right, from the things that we've been told, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And whatsoever is brought upon thee, take, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. So when those things have been taken from you, that you've coveted, that you've loved, that you had, you know, the money, the car, the clothes, the hose, and you have nothing. I have nothing. <laughs> when you ain't got nothing, you know, you're still that same person who's going to call on the name of the Lord. All right? Who's going to be that, who's going to remain uh, moral. You're going to keep that moral code. All right? You're not going to sell out to the so-called you know, a white man. Or anybody else for that matter. Alright, so Lord's will, this was edifying. And I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Makarkadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity of the men and women who follow. Shalom.